I got a message from Ruben, a subscriber to Grow Rights What, and this is a letter to you about debate, feminism, equality, and study habits. First, read the message for anybody following along so they have a frame of reference. Might skip a bit through it. Ruben says, I thought I'd send you a tiny warm-hearted message. The reason I'm not commenting is because I much prefer to stay out of the YouTube comments. Hopefully that's understandable. I'm a subscriber to Girl Rights What? Because I care for men's rights, which I personally believe are neglected by feminism. And I quite like her views on those issues. You do, however, make extremely valid argument that feminism needn't be hate just because it sticks to its own sex, shall we say. Actually, I'll respond as I go through this letter. The idea that feminism needs to address men's issues in order to not be hate. We can think of feminism as brain surgery and men's rights activism as heart surgery because feminists are dealing with people with brain disease and men's rights activists are dealing with people with heart disease. Before people laugh at that and think, yeah, feminists with their brain disease, imagine what a heart disease is. You've been trained to be heartless and now it's self-destructive to you. The idea that feminism came out of nowhere, not because of the heartlessness ingrained into men. But anyhow, let's look more superficially. Heart surgeons, well, brain surgeons for the feminists, heart surgeons, brain surgeons for the women, heart surgeons for the men, we'll say. Is this brain surgeon hate-filled because they're not dealing with heart patients? Or are they simply specialized? This is an example of where you think, oh, here I was locked in with a whole lot of people telling me what I want to hear or telling me what I believe. And so feminism must be hate if they're not specializing in this thing. Well, no, they say they're specializing in equality, so therefore they should do every little thing they're not doing that would speak of equality. There's a lot of ways to look at equality. We could raise everyone up to a Bill Gates. We could lower everyone down to a diamond mine slave worker. The idea that you have to be for these certain issues laid out by any particular men's rights activist in order not to be a hate-filled feminist, not a good argument. More though. I think you might be wrong in asserting that modern day feminism is the right way to tackle such issues as, as equality. I never said that. We weren't arguing whether feminism is the best way to tackle these issues. We were arguing whether feminism is hate. Now, the popular thing to do is to say, well, no, but I'm going to just hold on to that thing I said because... Look at the difference. And look where it took you. Don't just dismiss that. Look where it took you. The tone of the debate, the people debating against me, you really had in your mind to type out that I think feminism is the best way to tackle these issues. I never said that. I simply said that feminism isn't hate. Even my debate partner, Daniel Parody, if you watch her video, she refers to humanism. We all pretty much agreed in the context of comment sections and whatnot that really we're talking about humanism and that a subset to some people is feminism. Some people are like, no, that shouldn't be a subset or that's a hate-filled subset. Da, da, da. Nevertheless, I never said that feminism is the best way to go. I simply said it's not hate. And again, I'll say one more time, don't just dismiss that as, oh, well, I meant this or you meant this. Look at that and why you would have ever said out of anything I said that feminism is the best way to tackle these. Let's say you won the debate and feminism may no longer be called hateful. That doesn't, however, take away from the fact there are a lot of men and women who call themselves feminists and show hateful, disfavorable behavior. But again, consider how you're talking, the words you're choosing to use. The debate isn't so that I win the debate and then feminism is no longer called hateful. Again, I'm not arguing that feminism shouldn't be called hateful. I'm arguing that it is not hate. And an extension of that argument is to call it hate is useless because it's inaccurate. To call it hate doesn't help anything unless our goal was to make a handful of certain kinds of people feel self-righteous and morally superior. Then it would be useful to define feminism as hate, but as a practical solution to problems of equality, defining feminism as hate isn't accurate and it's not useful.
And uh, then you mentioned, actually the last thing I'll mention, then I'll give you a little story. You say, uh, in one of my videos, uh, you would look it up, but my videos are long. I define feminism as something along the lines of equal rights to men, something like this. When you say, you would look it up, except my videos are long. Actually, here goes the long story. I'm 34. I come from a, a youth when we didn't use the internet. We didn't have the internet. Eventually, we had pagers. We didn't have cell phones. And so we had more to live for. This isn't against you, but I'm saying in general. We had more to live for than to pretend we're too busy to hear other people's arguments, to pretend we're too busy to look back and check what someone says. Again, nothing personal to you, but I'm just using this as an example. I'm just imagine the, the worst case scenario where you really are using that as an, as an excuse not to understand me. But we'll get more into exactly how you still aren't better served by saying something's too long to check back with. In my days, we didn't have internet. We didn't do things on computers. We had an Apple IIe, black screen, green letters. We had things called books. And I know they still got books, but more and more, we don't use books. We use online stuff and you can, in ebooks, and you can search ebooks. Like, what was that phrase? Bam, and you find it. Or you do a Google search, bam, you find that quote. We actually had to reference books. And so what you do is when you find a part of a book that you like, you take note of the page because you don't want to have to look, you think it's terrible to have to look through a two hour video of mine for a quote. Try looking through a big book with no page numbers and no frame of reference for if it was closer to the beginning or the end and just try to find a line of text. No, that's why God invented book numbers and chapters and all these things so you can find parts more easily. Fast forward to today, you have videos where your videos are so long, I recommend as a study habit, study has more to do than school. School sets you up at best to be ready to study for your life and to, and to give speeches or write essays on things that are important to you. That's what school does. It's not just write this essay because we say so. It prepares you for something. So a good way to study on your own, whether or not you're still in school, is to keep track, if you're watching a video, keep track of points that you like. If somebody says something, whoa, stop that. Make a note of the time, especially when it's a long video, you make a note of the time. You don't have to look back through it. You keep track as you go. But of course, plenty of people, when they watch videos, however long, they do it passively. They're not really actively paying attention. They're kind of hearing stuff. Maybe they're doing other stuff at the same time. It's not going to be useful if you are studying something worth studying that's that's um we'll say tight enough to where you actually have to pay attention you have to pay attention and you should be taking notes along the way or otherwise it's just not worth doing it you watch my two-hour video the debate for it's not worth watching it if you're not going to take notes along the way because you won't remember at the beginning or at the end what i said at the beginning if it's important to you you would want to take those points, synthesize them, maybe reference them, do something with it. If you're not going to do that, that's so complicated, then you shouldn't even watch it. It's not worth just being entertained to watch that. But of course, more and more, that's the point of watching anything like this. Is this going to be entertaining? No, never mind. Too long, didn't read. Too long, didn't watch. But some things are made not to just entertain you, but to actually give you something that you can use. Like from now on, you don't have to say, feminists are hateful if they don't deal with men's rights. You can say, actually, feminists are like brain surgeons. They don't have to deal with heart disease in order to not be hateful. Now we have a thing in medicine called holism where you deal with everything. Oh, you got, you got heart disease, you got brain disease. Let's holistically deal with it through nutrition and diet and exercise and all that. Nevertheless, people who just stick to a specialty in brain surgery, they're not hate-filled because they don't deal, sorry, we, don't, we can't take your, your heart patient. What? This is an outrage. This is, this is hate-filled. No. That's something you can use. This isn't just me saying things and it's entertaining and people like it because I'm not wearing a shirt. They don't like it so I'm not wearing a shirt. They think I'm ugly so they're not going to watch. They think I'm good-looking so they are going to watch. That's not the point. More and more, you need to look towards things that can actually help you to later on do something with it. If it's just you passively watching, I, I think men's rights needs more attention, so I'm going to watch Gore Rights What? She says a bunch of things. She cites some references that I'm not even going to check. And even if I check them, I'm not going to actually check what they, what the research really accounted for. 
I'm just going to passively watch it and be reaffirmed in my assumptions. Not the right way to look at things. Now, as it relates to too long didn't read or too long didn't watch, the idea that, oh, this video was too long and people aren't going to watch it, that is something that has been evolving quite naturally based on supply and demand. See, so do you know why diamonds are expensive? It's not because of anything objective, like, oh, they're just, you know, they're, they're the most beautiful thing, this, that, and the other thing. No, it's because we, we control the supply. The supply is controlled. There's, there's plenty of diamonds, but when they're scarce, they're worth something. If they're not scarce, they're not. If you think it's because they're just so beautiful, we can make cubic zirconias. And from my time selling jewelry, I came to learn the cubic zirconias, the, the two differences between cubic zirconias and diamonds, there's the difference in the luster, how it shines. Cubic zirconia has more color, whereas the diamonds are clearer. And diamonds are a little bit harder on a hardness scale. That's not a big enough difference to make it worth thousands of times what a cubic zirconia is. And you say, no, diamonds are more beautiful. They're just cut more nice. If you can't sell a cubic zirconia for anything, regardless, because they're not rare, you're not going to take the time to cut it. But what dictates how nice you can make it is how hard it is, how much you can cut it without it breaking, how hard it is. And cubic zirconia are plenty hard. You can make them as beautiful as any diamond you've ever seen. It has nothing to do with what they look like. This It's the false, it's the inflated scarcity of diamonds. So how does this relate to too long didn't read or too long didn't watch? People are inundated now. We don't control the internet and say like, only these people can write a book. Dante's Inferno, best book ever. Plato's Dialogues, best book ever. The Beatles, best band ever. There was nothing else to do. When Plato wrote or Xenophon wrote or these people, there were a couple of authors, but that was it. They were so brilliant. There were no other options. The Beatles were so amazing. There were no other bands. If you had Metallica or... Jay-Z and any of these things people like, Justin Bieber, these, uh, it doesn't matter if they're good or not, just, if the things people like, if they had that and they could compete with the Beatles, people, people wouldn't be worshipping the Beatles, they'd be like, well, that's just one of millions of bands. But there was only that supply. For diamonds, there's only this supply, so it's worth something. So, compare diamonds to the run-of-the-mill wannabe rap artist or band. We got a, we got a demo, we got a demo. See, again, I'm 34 years old, so when I was a kid, having a demo meant something. Being on the cover of, of a magazine or being played on the radio meant something because there were only so many magazines, so many radios. Now, when you t somebody tells you, oh, we're on, we have a demo, that means nothing. It doesn't mean that you're one of the few people that was good enough and, and, and you're going to go somewhere because you have a, they can actually make you a CD. Everyone can make a CD, so it doesn't matter anymore. So more and more, you're not trying to get on with the system, you're trying to prove that you're better than all this other mess. So when you put forth ideas, like I put forth a video, it's not entertaining compared to, you could watch you know, popular videos like that guy Fred on YouTube, they got Jenna Marbles and a lot of others. Well, you know, pretty much anybody that's, that's more popular than me and that's most. You have to compete with that for the attention of all these people saying, oh, you should, you should wear things just this way, you should do this, you should be exactly this way, and then we'll give you attention. Plenty of people telling me, if you wore a shirt, maybe I'd take you serious. The idea that you're supposed to try and appeal to people, even as you're supposed to already pretend you're successful. I got a demo, I'm already a big deal. Now who wants my demo? And people are giving away their demos because it's completely inundated. So this too long didn't read and too long didn't watch, it's, it's been evolved to where people don't have time to watch my two hour video and they go, oh man, he didn't talk about anything. Because there are plenty of videos out there where for two hours people won't talk about anything. And so people are just used to, well, I'm not even going to risk it. If this was worth watching, it would be in a 30 second segment on a television show or else I, you know, I would have seen it if it was worth watching. So more and more, you, you can't get in unless you do everything right according to the sensibilities of culture. But more and more culture is completely empty. You know, music, for example, made up celebrities and lyrics that don't matter. Yet you feel it. Gangnam Style is a good example. You have to compete with that energy 
and imagine you actually want to say something. You have to compete with that energy while thinking up intricate ways to talk about complex subjects in an accessible way. And then you can compete with, hey, sexy lady, blah, 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 and people just wanting to do nothing. So when you are so certain as you were that, well, no, feminism needs to deal with these people or else they're a hate. No, brain surgeons versus heart disease. So certain that, well, you know, this person would probably be more popular if they were actually right. You can be right as hell. It won't matter. You can be even right as hell with 400 people. I've had people tell me like, oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck with your 400 subscribers. Can you imagine that? I don't know how old you are, Ruben, but and I'm 34. And when I was coming up, we didn't, most people didn't have computers, a couple of computer type people had computers. And so there wasn't this, everyone hide away and pretend not to want to interact with anyone. Keep your emotional thumb in your mouth. Keep your cell phone here as your security blanket, not deal with anyone as you worship celebrities who everybody likes. And then as celebrities, since there's so many of them now, and it's just, it's just devalued. Now, not only do you want to be a celebrity as you stay like this, but you see celebrities, it's not all good because people are always trying, ah, oh, people's always trying to get my attention. And so these people are hiding away, pretending, oh man, why does everyone want my attention when really they crave attention? This is the kind of culture that informs you. These kind of people locked away among themselves and saying, you know what? Feminism is hate if it doesn't do this. Or the feminists who say, you know what? All men are rapists and that all, that's all they are locked in these systems that don't make any sense. So as you mentioned, in conclusion, I might be wrongly calling myself a feminist because I seem a little broader and you think I should be an equalitist or an equalitarian, all this kind of stuff. Not necessarily. If you are for the targeted solution to brain damage, you can be a feminist. If you're for a targeted solution to heart disease, you can be an MRA. You can specialize in both. You can try to bring them together, but to say, well, this one is bad and that one is good. Doesn't really follow. Isn't really going to win any people to your side, except people who just need a friend feminists who are like, well, you don't make any sense. You don't really hear the feminist, the story of people, how they became a feminist on down the line. Instead, you just say, yeah, I mean, not you, but the plenty of MRAs will just say, men had it this bad. Well, I had it this bad and I've had these things, so I, you know, I'm a feminist. Well, don't you know that men had it this bad? Therefore, you didn't have it bad. But of course, men's rights people came by that very honestly, because what did feminists do? Women have it this bad. Well, yeah, but I'm down here being forced to fight in wars I don't want to do. Well, but women have it this bad. We, there's a glass ceiling. We can't get into the highest millionaire jobs. Well, I'm forced to work as a trash man or forced to work dangerous, grueling jobs. Well, nevertheless, you don't have it bad because we have it bad. It doesn't have to be that way. And plenty of men's rights and plenty of feminists aren't that way. Plenty do look for equality, but plenty like to stir it up and make a mess. So in the end, I disagree. I don't need to not be a feminist in order to go towards egalitarianism or anything like that. Thanks for the note. So long.